Welcome back to the Centre for Christian Spirituality. We thank you for being with us again as we reflect on the, uh, the Gospel of the Feast Day of Christ the King, which brings to a conclusion the liturgical year of the Church. So this is the climax, if you like, of our liturgical year. I invite you now to listen to the Gospel. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, and gave you food, or thirsty, and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger, and welcomed you? or naked, and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison, and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteousness into eternal life. This parable is only in Matthew. So it has a certain theme that's common to Matthew. But it, it's basically the... Um, the fulfilment of the of the day of Yahweh that's spoken of in the Old Testament, uh, the Son of Man coming in glory, is a bit like in Daniel, where the Son of Man comes on the cloud. So this is a um, a text that is filled with the Old Testament, as we've seen Matthew likes to do that. But I, I think the main thing about it is that um, really we've seen um, parables about what's going to happen at the end of time when Jesus comes in glory. Well, it, this is one of those things, but it actually points out, stop worrying about what's going to happen at the end, it's what's going to happen now that is the thing that will happen. So it's, it's kept capturing what we've seen in the other parables, but reminding us that really it's how we live now, it's how we will meet Jesus when he comes um, in all his glory. And those things there of being hungry and thirsty and naked and a stranger, etc., all of those things are in the Old Testament. Mm. Uh, but, so it's not a, a new list of things to do. And I don't think those particular things are anything more than examples. But it's a way of relating. And I think one of the things we've forgotten from the Old Testament is, is the concept of the covenant. That the covenant was with the people. And to love... To love God was to be part of that, and God had to say on several occasions, I don't want sacrifice, I want mercy. Right? In other words, to live according to the covenant. So I think it's, it's, um, it has a sort of harshness about it, but it's making the point if we recognise the Lord coming to us in those who are around us, then it will be the same when the Lord comes to us uh, at the end of time. And you can see it's a bit like the... Um, uh, you don't know the time, or the, or the day, or the hour. It's, it's, it's watch and be ready, but it's highlighting the fact that really stop worrying about the end, 
and really start focusing mm. on the future. It's just a good, good summation of the whole of Jesus' teaching, yes, actually, yes. isn't it, mm. in, in, uh, in a sense. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking of, um, you know, the commandments, love God, love one another. And here, it's to be able to appreciate in all who are part of our life's journey, are people um, who are loved by God and who has, ha has shared with them, as indeed with me, uh, God's life and God's love and my response to that that's the the, the critical thing for me in, in responding I've heard this many times and what struck me today was this concept of uh, all the people in our lives you know God is in them and yeah. am I um, looking at them as an mm. with the attitude of was well, where where were you when I was hungry and thirsty? All yeah. the people, yeah. God is in them. Yeah. Um, so once again, it comes back to my capacity to love and open my heart yeah. to the people yeah. who are in yeah. alive, yeah. but with the with the, the recognition that God is in them. Yeah. 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 As you said, David, like it's not somewhere else. It's no, now, yeah. right now, right now in my daily life. Yeah. Yeah. I said, Angela Foligno, we don't hear often quoted, she says that the world is full of God. Yes. And um, Tayyar de Chardin speaks about the divine milieu yes. Yes. in yes. which we live. And it, it's a question of having the perception yes. to see God. I've used the example before of God is a son of darkness yes. and the rays that come off are dark. We can't see them. But we've got to look with the eyes of faith. Yes. And if yes. we look with the eyes of faith, then we can see God everywhere. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. A great expression. Okay, well you've heard what we've drawn from the scriptures. We invite you now to see what it is that God is saying to you in these scriptures. We invite you now to listen to the scriptures again. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that, you saw, that we saw you hungry, and gave you food, or thirsty, and gave you something to drink? And when was it? We saw you as a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing. And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of those who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will to say to those on the left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fires prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. As I mentioned, I was thinking of Angela Foligno's words, the, the world is full of God. And I, I think that I've always tried to see Jesus coming in people. But when you look out and see the trees and things around you, I mean, they, in a sense, are just as much God yeah. speaking to us. So I thought I might focus on the, 
the creation itself, which is God's first revelation. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there's a message there that, um, that's constantly before us if we look with the eyes of faith. And for me it was to try and be kinder, be kinder to the people that I meet and see. Just be kind. I want to sit, uh, I, I think this week with this thought that God loves each of us equally, not one more than the other. So what does that mean? to me, or for me, what are the consequences of this in terms of my relationship with people, not just with those I get on with, but with people in general? I was thinking of that earlier, that, that God loves us all equally, when we were talking about the talents. And another principle that comes into our tradition is that God loves us all, but we can only receive that love according to the capacity that we have. Right? Yes. And that, um, that, it, that in a sense, we, we are always trying to develop a greater capacity yeah. to be open yeah. uh, to that love. And I think that's, yeah. that's what you're getting at, that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we invite you now to look at the text and try to draw out something that um, you can uh, take and put into your own life so that the, what's in the scripture can actually take a, a new um, life in your living as a disciple of Jesus. We now turn our heart to the Lord and in prayer we ask that we might be given the grace to carry through the resolution that we have made and to bring into our life and transform our life by what it is we have taken from the scriptures. Thank you for being with us. Um, we have done this for the whole year and we hope that we have helped you to come closer to the Lord as we've shared our thoughts and prompted you to open your hearts to the scriptures as well. So we conclude our year, our liturgical year, with the opening prayer of the final liturgy of the year. Almighty ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through Christ our Lord.